Hello my friends, my name is Jack and today I'm going to be giving you some designer bag recommendations. I have a couple different categories, each with four recommendations within them. I know that everybody's needs and wants are different when it comes to a bag, but these are merely recommendations and I hope to be a stepping stone in your final decision or if you don't know where to start, give you a bit of an idea on where to start. Again, I am not qualified to talk about any of these things, but this is something that I'm very passionate about and have quite frankly given a lot of thought to. So let's do it. My first category is classic bags. These are bags that have been either popular for a long time or have just been in production for a long time and have kind of a widespread appeal, um, but also uh, are able to be carried on a daily basis and are pretty versatile. We're starting off strong with the Hermes Birkin. I know what you're saying. Hey man, why would you start with a $20,000 bag? Are you serious? Yes, I am serious because this bag has absolutely exploded in popularity in the last, I would say 10 years probably, though they are no easier to get than before. Um, I'm starting to see them a lot more on social media and a lot more people are becoming aware of their existence and I think it's always been a classic but now it's a classic in so many more people's eyes as they begin to learn about it. Again, you're only going to be getting these bags at really, really high price points and it is very rare that you are able to purchase one brand new. You're often going to be paying above retail price on secondary markets. Next is the Lady Dior uh, in the medium size, which is what I have here. It's $6,000. I believe the small size is around $5,000. Um, but this is a classic just because of how long it's been in production and how long it's been popular. This has had a bit of a revival in the past couple of years, especially with the rise of social media. And I think that it's a really great just all around bag that is instantly recognizable and definitely a classic. Um, it also comes in a multitude of colors and materials, so you have plenty of options to find the perfect one for you. Next is the Chanel Small Flap. This one is undoubtedly a classic. I see a lot of people with these. Um, they have become, I think accessible is maybe the wrong word, but more people are able to splurge a little bit and are okay doing so and getting bags like these. So while these are definitely classics and have been popular among bag people and bag collectors for a very long time, they are kind of getting this more mainstream appeal as of recent. And even though Chanel keeps raising their prices, they are still very popular and can be found in certain sizes and colors. Um, but normally these are going to run you around $8,000. My last recommendation for a classic that's a little more price effective coming in at $2,300 is the Saint Laurent Sac du Jour. This is, in my opinion, a really instant classic, not so much because of the brand and the kind of history the brand has with the bag, but more so because of the shape and the versatility of the bag. Among, I think more specifically, Saint Laurent collectors than bag collectors, this is a really popular bag. Um, just because, again, it's a really easy to carry shape, it's versatile, comes in a bunch of sizes and materials. Um, so again, you can find the perfect one, they've got a lot of options, and it's really just a great all-around bag. My next category is investment pieces. Um, these are bags that are going to hold value over time better than most bags. Um, keep in mind that I am not repeating any bags, so some that I've mentioned before might fall into these categories that I mentioned later, but I'm just trying to keep it fresh and come up with four new bags for each category. First up, we have the Louis Vuitton Multi Pochette. Uh, according to an article that I found, I can post a picture of it right here. These bags hold an average 137% value of their original retail prices. The current original retail price is $2,500. And I think that these bags hold their value so well because of how useful they are. And they also have these like little accessories that come on it. So you're really getting more than one item with a single bag purchase. Uh, and at two and a half thousand dollars compared to some of the ones that I've even mentioned already, that's a pretty good starting point. And if you can wear it for a couple years and then still make some money on it, that's even better. 
Um, next up is the Hermes Mini Kelly. These have an average aftermarket value of 167% of their retail price, right around $8,000. Um, I think this bag is popular because it's the like entry level Hermes bag, if you will. At that price point, you can't really be considered entry level in my opinion, but if you're trying to get into the world of Hermes, as so many people have tried for so long and taken so many years to do so, I think this is a good place to start. Uh, it's a really versatile bag while it is small. It's really, it's honestly just really cute and goes with all kinds of stuff and you can use it for virtually anything in my opinion. Next up is one of the more price effective options on this entire list. It's the Telfar small shopping bag. Um, these don't necessarily sell for much more than their retail price on the secondary market. I have included it in this list because the demand for Telfar since 2020, 2020 has increased by more than 600% in terms of online searches, sales, and secondary market purchases, the popularity of these bags has soared. And they also come in a bunch of different sizes, but the small shopping bag seems to kind of be the king just because, again, it's small, it's versatile, you can carry it every day and for almost any purpose. These are gonna come in at $150 retail price. And in classic colors, the way that Telfar does its releases, it's often difficult to get these bags in kind of classic colors. Um, so they do often fetch more on the secondary market, usually in brand new condition, but for used conditions, you can usually sell them for around retail. My last recommendation for investment pieces is a vintage Gucci Jackie. These uh, new models of the Jackie that Gucci is making now only hold about 55% of their original value on the secondary market, but vintage models are usually well over 100%. You can often find actually really good deals as well on these bags, and they're only going to increase in value with time, in my opinion, coming in around $700 to $1,000 usually in the more popular colorways. And these bags, they're already vintage, so you can use them all you want, and as long as you take decent care of them, you'll be able to fetch more than what you paid um, if you're looking to sell it sometime down the road. My next category is versatility, and I have the Prada Renylon shoulder bag as my number one option, coming in at $1,200. Um, this is undoubtedly a classic bag, but I put it in the versatility category because this bag is everywhere and on all kinds of people and used for all kinds of purposes. And I think it's more common than most of the bags that I listed in the classic category. So I think versatility is a better way to describe this bag than a classic, even though it is a classic. Next up is the Goyard St. Louis. Uh, these have increased in price a lot recently. I think they're about 1,600 now. But in terms of a tote bag, this is really just as good as it gets, I think. Um, I'm a big fan of the Goyard monogram. I've made a video on Goyard and why I like it so much. Um, but this is definitely one of the more versatile bags out there. And you get the little pouch that comes in it, which you can sell on the secondary market for like half the retail price of the bag. And I know a lot of people do that. I can see, you can go on um, like the Real Real and Grailed and eBay and find tons of the St. Louis um, inserts for like five or six hundred dollars and a lot of them sell at or close to that price point. My next recommendation, again a tote bag, is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull. This has kind of become maybe like a basic bag, um, but at two thousand dollars now the price kept increasing as it became more popular as Louis Vuitton tried to reinstate their exclusivity. Um, just a really versatile bag. Again, comes with the insert like the Goyard tote bag and is really just a versatile everyday throw everything in it bag. Um, I think it's a versatile choice for the, much of the same reasons as the Goyard, so I'm not gonna repeat myself. And my last one is the Saint Laurent Le Monogram. I believe it's a bucket bag actually. Um, is what it would be classified as, but I think this is a super versatile bag. Again, much for the same reasons, but it's a little bit unique in this category, I think. You don't see a lot of Saint Laurent bags with this kind of monogram on them. Uh, a lot of their small leather goods still have this, but it's kind of rare that you'll find it on bags anymore. So I think this is a really cool choice coming in at $1,500. 
um, that is gonna be a really good bang for your buck in terms of a big designer bag with a lot of volume. Next up is for Wow Factor. My number one and kind of an underrated choice, I think, is the Bulgari Serpenti Forever bag. This one kind of flies under the radar, I think, but is a really cool, really cool bag. And it comes in a lot of these like bright neon colors and has the snake head on it that will really kind of wow people, I think. A, because not a lot of people know it exists, and B, because it's just this really unique clasp. Uh, these come in at $3,000 and are kind of difficult to get. They're usually not on display in Bulgari stores. You more often than not have to ask for them, or you can purchase them online as well. My next up is the Dior Book Tote. Uh, I see a lot of people with these now. Um, just very loud and very, like, logomania centered, which is not necessarily a bad thing, I don't think. If you are looking for a bag with wow factor, I think that this is the best option on the list, coming in at $2,900. Um, plenty of space, maybe not the best everyday bag um, because it's the book tote and you have to carry it, um, but definitely something that will wow people. You can get it monogram too, which makes it extra cool. Uh, my next recommendation is the green Bottega Veneta cassette. Uh, the Bottega Green is one of my favorite greens of all time, and this bag is going to come in right around $1,000. Uh, I have the kind of medium version as my recommendation. I think that's kind of the most price effective because any more Bottega bags can be getting up there in terms of price. I think that this bag has the potential to be a classic in the future. I think that in maybe 20 years, we'll look back on the cassette bag the same way that we do with like a Chanel small flap. While they may not be on the same level, I think that in terms of a wow factor bag that is instantly recognizable and can be used in a ton of different ways is gonna be just like that. My last wow factor choice is maybe a little unexpected, but it's the Casablanca Grand Prix Weekender. Um, duffel bags aren't really in the conversation for designer bags all the time, and I think they should be. This one comes in at $2,700, and I just love the way that Casablanca is like Versace's cool younger cousin. Um, I've really fallen in love with this brand, and I think that this is an amazing weekender bag that is really gonna catch people's attention and wonder, um, yeah, I think it's just a really cool bag. My next category is for a subtle flex. Um, my next category after that is a flex, so I'm gonna do those both in a row, but we'll start with the subtle flex. Um, my favorite one at this point is the Emmy shoulder bag from the row. Um, just a super versatile bag that comes in at a pretty decent price point at 1,300. Not a lot of people know of the row yet, but they make some really good stuff. Um, this is the second time that I'm going to have mentioned Charles Gross on this channel, but he's a big fan of the row and shows you how really underrated that brand is. Next is the Bottega Veneta Leather Clutch. This one comes in at 2,900. Remember how I said that some of the Bottega bags are getting up there? Um, this is again, more of a subtle flex because it's hard to see that it's Bottega, um, but you're still getting that really, really good craftsmanship. And this is again, gonna be a very useful kind of daily bag. Um, I know a lot of people aren't big fans of clutches, but much like weekender bags, I think clutches should be in the designer bag conversation more than they are. My next recommendation is the Amina Muadi Silk Box Bag coming in at $1,100. I think this is a really unique choice. And while $1,100 might not be considered a huge flex, I think, Having a bag from an unknown brand that is still really good looking and has really good craftsmanship is a subtle flex because it shows that you know you know a lot more than the average person <laughs> about um, just bags and that you're able to find these cool bags in corners of fashion that most people don't find them in. My last recommendation for a subtle flex is the Loewe Luna bag coming in at $2,200. I just think it's cool. I like Loewe a lot, and that's still a brand that I think has yet to kind of break into the mainstream, especially with its bags. So you can get a little bit ahead of the curve with this one and have your subtle flex. So my next one for a flex, these are kind of a fusion of the wow factor category and the like, look at my designer bag type of idea. Um, so my first recommendation is the Gucci 1955 Horsebit Tote. 
Um, again, really versatile bag, Gucci monogram, everybody knows it, and it's kind of a classic styling too. And I think that you have a bit of an added flex here because you have the equestrian heritage that is still kind of hard to find in a lot of new Gucci collections, I think. My next recommendation is the Dior saddlebag. It's a really recognizable silhouette. It comes in a monogram and a smooth leather, whichever suits your fancy for a flex, you can get the monogram, the oblique monogram, which I personally am a big fan of. Um, these come in at 3,300. The craftsmanship on these bags is crazy. Uh, and they're unisex. I see a lot of guys wearing these bags too, which I always like to see. Um, and it's just a really classic bag that I think in the future we will look back very fondly on. My next recommendation is the Bottega Veneta Cabot bag coming in at 4,500. Um, this is just a really, really well-crafted bag. And by now, Bottega's uh, weave is very recognizable, I think. And like I said, Bottega bags are really getting up there in price. So that's a big ask for a bag like this, but the craftsmanship is insane. That weave is handmade and it's really difficult to do. So that in itself is definitely a flex, I think, as that bag becomes more and more recognizable. My last recommendation is the Fendi Wavy Tote. I love the color on this, and I think that the Fendi monogram isn't appreciated enough in the designer bag conversation. And just in terms of a flex and even a wow factor, I think this one is a really, really good choice coming in at $2,100. My last category is for value. These are lower price bags that you can still get that designer bag feel from and can still be used for a very long time. My first recommendation is the Coach Tabby bag. Uh, this one in specific is the denim monogram one, but it comes in a bunch of different styles and sizes. I think Coach has really kind of had a renaissance in the past couple of years and the Tabby bag has kind of been spearheading that. Um, you're starting to see a lot more of these on the street, despite, um, you know, not being up there in price with the other bags coming in at $395. It's a really great choice and it looks like a designer bag and you can still carry it as such. Um, I think maybe Coach's Renaissance won't be that long of long of life, but I do think that the tabby bag is probably the best thing to come out of that. My next recommendation is the Simon Miller Puffin Bag. This is a unique one uh, that I still think is really cool and kind of has the design notes of a designer bag coming in at $290. And this is also something that's going to get some attention and be like, ooh, where'd you get that? Uh, and then you can wow people with, oh yeah, it was $290, but like, the, how cool does this look? Uh, very much the same in my next recommendation, the L Uniform number 25. At $535, I think this is very much in the same vein, something that's gonna get a lot of attention and a lot of questions because it's a classic styling, it looks really good, and it comes in at a great price point. Uh, and my last recommendation is the Prada Top Handle Bag. Uh, this is gonna be a really small bag coming in at $650 from Prada, but I do think that this is one of the better price bags that they have in terms of volume and value. Um, while you may not be able to fit a bunch of stuff in it, it is a classic styling and I think is really cute as an occasional bag and can really be used like a bag of a much higher price point and can carry the same weight. So thank you for listening. Those are all my recommendations for a designer bag. I hope that I made some points, maybe made some sense and can help you in your journey on finding the perfect bag for you. So thank you for listening and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later.